today we're going to be talking about two very important statistics in the hockey sabermetrics community. We're going to be talking about GBT, which stands for Goals Versus Threshold, and GVS, which stands for Goals Versus Salary. GVT was created back in 2004 by Tom Awad with the help of Ian Fife, who also created the point allocation statistic, and Rob Volman and Alan Ryder. Now, GVT measures the overall contributions of a player to his team's goal differential. That can be done in two ways. He either increases his goal, the team's goal differential by scoring more goals, adding goals to the team's goal differential, or preventing them, thus limiting goals left. So this is done by taking that player and measuring his overall contribution and comparing it to the contributions of a replacement level player given the same amount of ice time. Now, you might be asking, what exactly is a replacement level player? Well, a replacement level player is someone from the minors. So someone from the AHL would re represent uh, a replacement level player. And that player would be assigned a zero GVT because they're the very definition of a replacement level player. And you might notice a similarity between this GVT and value over replacement player, VORP, which is a very important statistic in baseball. They're very similar. A couple other important aspects to GVT. First, it's a very simple statistic in, in its interpretation in that GVT is measured in goals. So let's take a player on the Rangers. Let's say Brad Richards has a 20.0 GVT. That's not what he had, but we're just using a hypothetical for this instance. That would mean that Brad Richards contributes 20 goals above what a replacement level player in the AHL would contribute to the Rangers given the same amount of ice time that Brad Richards had this year. There are some other important interesting aspects of GVT as well. Also, GVT is only impacted by statistics that directly affect goals. So if we're going to look at indirect stats such as goalie wins, goals against average, we're not going to include those. So they're out of GVT. Also GVT normalizes for different player errors. So if there's an error where there's more scoring per game or fewer goals per game, GVT will account for that. GVT will also account for different positions. So forwards, generally speaking, are on the ice an average of 15 minutes per game, whereas defensemen are on the ice generally 20 minutes per game. Now that would seem to give defensemen the edge in that they would automatically have a higher value in terms of GVT than forwards, but GVT normalizes for that. So all of that is taken into account in goals versus thresholds. Now, what does GVT consist of? Well, there are four important aspects to GVT, or factors to GVT. There's offense GVT, there's defense GVT, there's goaltending GVT, and there's shootout GVT. Offense GVT just measures the offensive value a player contributes over that of a replacement level player, given the same ice time. And in offense GVT, the main statistics used are goals and assists. And goals count for primarily most of the value, with assists being close but not nearly as valuable as goals. There's still a sizable difference. On the defensive side, for defensive GVT, or defense GVT, they're interchangeable. We're mainly looking at shot prevention. 
So what goes exactly into shot prevention? Well, we want to look at plus minus for a particular player and the shots taken while that particular player was on the ice and compare that to the team's overall even strength goal differential. Now the one aspect of defense GBT that could potentially be a problem is that it doesn't factor in shot quality. But shot quality is still a relatively new field in hockey sabermetrics. There have been a couple of studies. It's still developing. Eventually, it'll be included in defense GVT. There's also goaltending GVT, and that's measured by the shots blocked by a goaltender of the overall shots taken on net. So that's fairly simple. But there's also an additional factor called the Martin Brodeur factor, and that takes into account puck handling skills. And then there's also shootout GBT, which has only been around since 2005-2006 when it was created. And what that does, pretty easy, it looks at a player's total goals during shootouts and compares it to his shots taken during the shootout. So with GBT, there's still a few limitations, one of which is that it's a great regular season stat because it looks at goal differential, but it's not a great postseason statistic, and that's because of sample size. You're not playing over 82 games, a league average team. You're playing in the first round a great defensive team or a great offensive team or a team with great goaltending, so the results are skewed. Also, it doesn't take into account the quality of your line mates, like quality of competition, which we'll get into in weeks ahead. And that means if you're on a really great line, obviously your GBT is probably going to be higher than what it should be. And the opposite goes as well. If you're on a fairly unproductive line, your GBT, despite you being very good possibly, will suffer. And then also there's the intangible aspect which is not factored into GVT. So nothing about a player's talent, leadership, or charisma is factored in. Now how do you convert GVT to wins? And how do you convert wins to GVT? Well it's quite simple actually. You see, 6 GVT is equal to 1 win. So if you want to measure a player's contributions to his team in terms of wins instead of GVT, you take his overall GVT and you divide it by 6. And that will give you how many wins he's worth. And in baseball, you call that war. Wins above replacement. So. Again, there's another aspect that's tied in closely to the baseball sabermetric community. Now there's another statistic, GVS, Goals versus Salary, which was created in 2009 by Hockey Prospectus's Robert Volman. And what that does is it takes GBT and it puts it against an individual's cap hit. So this is what I mean. You're looking at an individual player's production relative to cost. So let's say you have a really, really great player, but he has a very, very bloated salary. He might perform well on the ice, but relative to his salary, he's just all right. On the other hand, if you have a very young player who's not making a ton of money, but is performing very well, you have a player performing at a great level who's not making that much money. That makes him a very valuable commodity given that we now play in the salary cap era. So that was GVT and GVS. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next week.